things in particular I, I want to talk to you about. And that is, uh, first, your role in politics, of what you should be doing. You, you've heard generally the, the notion that, well, you got to get out there and, and uh, do things. Well, do what things and why? I want to talk to you about that uh, a little bit more specifically. And the other thing is that this is a national race. It's a race for the governorship. It's a race for assembly and senate seats, etc. And we should win all of that for the sake of the Democratic Party because the Democrats are better for this state and for the country than the Republicans are. That's a point I want to make, maybe even a little bit tediously. We are better. There are different ways to govern. There are different ideas about governance. And what this state will, this election reminds me of is what the Reagan election reminded me of way back in 1984. It goes all the way back to the Great Depression. Republicans have specific ideas about the economy. And they're terrible ideas. <laughs> and they're proven to be terrible over and over. And that happened again. There's a difference between John Corzine, a very big difference between him and the Republican opponent he has. John Corzine sees politics differently than the Republican opponent. The Republic of, uh, Republican opponent is a guy who is much more like Bush the new Bush, the second Bush. And, and, and just, just remember this about your policy. Remember the years 1993 all the way until now. You had two different political systems in that period. The democratic system at its classic best and the Republican system at its classic worst. And they demonstrated themselves. Remember 1993, the first year of Clinton Gore. Clinton Gore were there until Bush. And what kind of governance did they give you? They gave you democratic governance. They gave you governance that believes in all the people in the community being important, especially the ones that need, because government was invented to fill the space that is left by the private system. Uh, Abraham Lincoln had it perfectly. Government's the coming together of people to do for one another collectively, as you're doing it collectively, that's government. Government is the coming together of people to do for one another collectively what they could not do as well or at all privately. If you could do it privately, you don't need government. If the government, if the private system of the United States of America from the first day of our constitutional existence had taken care of sick old people, you wouldn't have had to wait until 1965 for government to say we have to take care of sick old people who don't have money. And so, so there, there, there are different ideas about governance. And the democratic idea is look, when the private system and philanthropy are not enough, you've got to fill that space. John Corzine thinks the same way about education and, and health care. If I were writing a constitution all over again, I would have added those two things to the Constitution of the United States of America. The constitution in New, New York, incidentally, has poverty in it. The Constitution should have said in the beginning, Free speech, free this, free that. Also, education for everybody to a certain level. Absolutely mandated. And health care, health care for all the people who need it and can't afford it. So, so the Democrat, that was Clinton and Gore. And here's what they gave you. Now listen to this. I'm sure you knew it, but you might have forgotten it. Here's what we got in the Clinton Gore years. Now listen closely. Doing the democratic way. 23 million new jobs. Tremendous. An upwardly mobile middle class. People were going up. Everybody was doing better. You were getting raises. Labor was getting raises for its people. Everybody was going up. Fewer poor people. The amount of poverty shrunk. The amount of children at risk, a child at risk is usually a child in a poor, broken home that's at risk of not being educated, at risk of maybe being abused, at risk of maybe taking drugs. 
more of those uh, <laughs> children in Republican years than in the Clinton Gore years. They reduced that number of children. And so, 23 million new jobs. Balanced budgets, wow, one balanced budget after another. Do you know when they finished? Do you know that they left a potential surplus of $5.4 trillion? $5.4 trillion, all right? And they did all of this, they did all of this, and they were at peace. We were at peace for that entire period. Okay, <laughs> then came the Republicans. The that was classical Democrat. That was perfect. That was Roosevelt. That was all the best governance that you've seen. And it's democratic. Now the Republicans took over after that. And what did they give you in their eight-year opportunity? Because George Bush and Dick Cheney had the same eight years that Clinton and Gore had. What did they do with it? Take everything the Democrats did, they did the opposite. There were very few jobs. There was a terrific economic problem. The only people who did well were not the middle class, they were sliding. We still are sliding, the middle class. Not the poor, they were growing. There were more poor people. You know, what else did they give you? They gave you a, a war that was questionable, to put it mildly, in Iraq, a war that was right, which was Afghanistan, because you were going after the people who had created 9-11 and killed a lot of people from New Jersey. And that was probably a good war <coughs> then. What it is now is a whole other question. And, and, and so they failed. They took care of who? They took care of the super wealthy. In the midst of all of this, they gave big tax cuts to people who did not need it. While the poor were growing, the middle class was sinking, the economy was getting weaker, and they left us with a tremendous recession. Tremendous. I call it not a recession. I distinguish it from the Great Depression. There's been only one of those, and I lived through those, and so did my parents. But this is a great recession. And it was born by Bush-type politics that were known as supply side. You've heard supply side, right? Do you know what supply side means? Supply side means this. And Ronald Reagan used the language, and the guy he ran with was George Bush Sr., the old man. And here's what the principle was. If you take care of the people at the top, if you give them tax cuts, the more you give them, what happened, now I'm talking about the top, the very top. I'm not talking about middle class people. I'm talking about the very top. If you do that, what happens automatically is that the wheels of commerce start spinning faster and faster. You do more and more business, and in the end, you get back all the money you gave up in tax cuts plus more. In other words, and who's saying that to? His Republic opponent is saying that. He said it very recently. He's got some kind of plan which he's going to give benefits to the people at the top, and that will produce all kinds of wealth that he can put back into the budget. That's called supply side. Did it work? Of course not. It didn't work when it was called trickle down. That was in the Rudra. And it didn't work when it was called supply side, and it didn't work when it was used by Bush and Cheney. It left us for dead economically, and it won't work when his Republican opponent God forbid, yes, the this is national. This is national. What we're talking about is going to affect all of America. They're after John Corzine, who? The Republicans. Which Republicans? Republicans like his opponent. Republicans like the supply siders. They are supply siders. And they're after him. They're, you, you can read it in the papers. Ooh, the Republicans are trying to win the New Jersey governorship from John Corzine. Why? Because it makes a point for the whole nation. He's wrong. His opponent is right. Let's go back to supply side. Let's try the trickle-down theory that left us for dead. Let's try George Bush's uh, theory, which left us for dead economically. That's what's bringing me from New York here, in addition to wanting to be in New Jersey and being for a guy I think is a great governor already and going to be a greater one. There are big things at stake here. Now, what can you do about it? You've got, what, two, three hundred votes in this room, perhaps. Yeah, that's all you have. 
but you can multiply it many times by word of mouth. And make no mistake about word of mouth, it is still the best kind of communication. To get the see it on television, who knows who made the, 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 the television commercial? What does it mean to me? It's artificial. Somebody's trying to con me. Uh, if, if you read it in a newspaper, read it in a magazine, it, 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 it's, its credibility is not established. But when a human being walks up to you, an intelligent one and a well-intentioned one, and says with all his or her heart, listen, I know this man. I know the <coughs> issue. I know what's happening. You've got to vote this way for your sake, for the sake of New Jersey and for the sake of the United States of America. These Republicans are making John Corzine a big crusade to bring him down. Why? Because they want power. Where? In New Jersey? Uh, yeah, they want it in New Jersey, but they want it in the United States of America again. They're dreaming about bringing down Obama. They're delighted to see him fail. They're praying for his failure. They don't give a damn what his failure would mean to all the poor people, all the middle class people, all the people who desperately need the help he wants to give, not only to the United States of America, but to the world. And that's why the Nobel Peace Prize people said, we're going to give it. 21 days you have. 21 days. And just do the numbers in your head. You can have a, a if you've got kids, you can have a lot of fun with the kids doing the arithmetic. What happens when you multiply, when you take one person and say, effectively, this is the case for John Corzine, this is why it's so important, it is certainly important for our county, it's important for our state, it's important for the state very, very uh, significantly, but it's important for the United States of America, and then that person goes and tells another 10, 12 people. And those 10 to 12 people tell us, how many votes do you think that might? Hey, look, you can win by one vote. I won in 1982 when nobody gave me a shot. The only people I had, they had Koch, they had the New York Times, they had Rupert Murdoch, they had the Post, they had the Daily News. I didn't have anything. They outspent me by twice the money I spent. I had the unions of the... Andrew Mark Cuomo, who happens to be my son, who went up to Syracuse with a truck overnight, came back with tomato plant sticks, about a thousand of them, and, and nailed signs to every one of them, and showed up in the Columbus Day Parade, you know, on both sides of the street, with all kinds of labor guys with their the tomato sticks in the air, and, the, and there was a story in the New York Times that said, where did these people come from? <laughs> and we won. We won by six points. How? Word of mouth, individuals, hand in hand, right, looking that other person in the eye and say, this is important. That's what you have to do. You cannot count on just your own vote. You've got to multiply that vote over and over and over again. And look, John Corzine, I know, I was a governor for 12 years. That is a great, great privilege. It's also a great, great ordeal. You can, you, you can learn a lot about how to be a governor in 12 years. And I know how good he has been under these circumstances. I'm, I'm not good at lying for people. Uh, I know I'm a lawyer, but I am not good at lying for people. And I wouldn't lie for John Corzine. He, he is a great, governor who's going to be a greater one when you give him this victory <coughs> because it will then be clear that he took on the best case the Republicans can make, the best case they could throw at him, and he beat them. They tried to bring him down and he won. That makes him a national figure. He's already a good friend of the uh, Obamas. He was there helping Obama in the beginning. He put out the first economic plan and helped Obama write his plan. It's not a bad idea, if you're a governor, to have a president as a friend. <laughs> I told you you didn't need me, you didn't need me. Uh, I, I've enjoyed this thing a lot more than you did. Just remember, <laughs> just remember the, the basic point. Just remember the basic point. What's at stake here is, yes, the great state of New Jersey. And I hope that you're, I know you're going to be successful. 
and I know you're going to go after that with all of these wonderfully devoted uh, political leaders in this room and many more that happen not to be here. You're going to make New Jersey better and better. It's already either the number one or number two per capita wealth people in the state. It's also one of the most beautiful places in the state. And you will make it one of the most important political entities in the United States of America. It's already a great place to, to uh, live. Uh, and and, 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 and I, I hope you will make it greater. I will try to do my part to make New York almost as good as New Jersey. <laughs> And we'll do that too. So, so, so remember what's at stake here. It's a lot more than an ordinary race. It's a race that has national implications. You're dealing with big ideas, their big idea and our big idea. And our big idea has always been better. We believe in all the people. We don't care what color they are. We don't care where they came from. We are particularly interested in them if they're poor or they're invalided, or they're diseased, or they're sick. And we know that there are needs for government to deal with those people because there's a limitation on what the private sector will do for them. That's what we believe. The other guys don't believe that. That doesn't make them sinners, but they don't believe it. We do. The country needs what we have. John Corzine is what we have. We've got to make him. Better.